We had Final Cut on Barely Ten. And believe me, every movie we make is a battle for that. And you know, it's half the reason that I went to Europe to make movies. We only worked on a couple of films where he didn't have Final Cut. And once those experiences were endured, he made it a rule to um, never, to always have Final Cut from that point on. First of all, I think that uh, very few people realize that he's one of the last Final Cut directors, period. Uh, I mean, that says a lot. They don't even have, like, in the contracts now, you can't even get that language. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, how many directors working on Hollywood really have final cut? You want to have a first cut as soon as possible after they've wrapped principal photography. Basically, what you're looking at is my first cut. The big change was Harvey eavesdropping on the confessional scene. That scene was much, much, much longer. Other than that, you're basically looking at my first cut. That's what I like about Abel, you know? He, you know, he, I mean, we really had the collaboration, you know, he really liked what I did. I ought to have turned bitter semen into fertile sperm. Hatred to love. And maybe to have saved their souls. I saw Bad Lieutenant at the Toronto Film Festival. I saw it twice in the course of two days. The first time I saw the film, I paid attention to its issues and themes and breaking taboos and shocking, and I underestimated the first time, you know. Uh, the second time, two days later, as often is the case, the movie is so rich and so dense, it's only 96 minutes long, I believe, and yet I think that the movie stands extremely well on a second viewing. Uh, it, uh, it's really a movie that holds up when you kind of dissect it in terms of its visual style. I'm not sure if people really knew what to think. Uh, I do know, though, that there were a couple of crucial reviews that kind of put us at ease and I think kind of put, you know, a lot of the people along the distribution line at ease. In any case, during that year, I remember seeing Roger Ebert on The Tonight Show calling it one of the 10 best films of that year. And who could have thought that an Abel Ferrara film made for a million dollars would be one of the 10 best films of a year? of any year. The movie provoked a lot of religious groups when it uh, opened theatrically in November 1992 in the United States that it's sacrilegious. I don't think so at all. It's a very religious film. You do believe in God, don't you? Even critics relate to the film on a strictly thematic level, on a narrative level. Very few people talk about the style. It's beautifully shot by Ken Kelch, and it's beautifully edited. I find it very, very much a piece of work which is uh, coherent on any level, thematic, ideological, visual. Yes, it has access, you know, but I think they belong um, to the picture on any number of levels. So I did not find it uh, to be excessive, except I knew that mainstream critics and mainstream audiences will find it extremely so. It wasn't until we got to Europe and the film was in the Cannes Film Festival when it really had an impact. I mean, it was exciting. He was shocked that they liked it, but that's Abel. Abel doesn't understand why people like what he does. And when he got back from that trip, he was blown because it did really well. It was really well received. He digs down. He digs down to find out something in the human condition that generally has not been accessed by a lot of filmmakers. He digs down deeper than what's on the page. I think that there's audience out there, and if it's outside of the shores of the U.S., then so be it, that wants that, that can feel that, that loves that verisimilitude. So I think it's a very sad reality, and in, in a way ironic, that the best festival in the world, Cannes, would premiere his pictures, and then in his home country, no one knows who he is. You have to really appreciate film as an art to watch what Abel makes. And it's disturbing, and it makes you think, and you can walk out of the movie theater and be just somber. I remember shooting Bad Lieutenant, the whole crew, after a while, I think after day 10, nobody even talked to each other because we were just in the mode and that's where his films put you but they make you think and in this country we don't want to think about things that make us unhappy you know how many people saw bad lieutenant movies not not all that many i mean it's an interesting thing that a lot of people saw it on videotape a lot of people see it today over and over again a lot of people see it on dvd but in europe it played for six months in paris 
unfortunately, Ferrara lost its fan base in the United States, and I think the people who know his work go back to King of New York, the addiction, and I would say that of the 22 plus picture that he has made, at least half of the output uh, is pretty impressive. So I think he has a body of work. I wish more people would see his picture. I wish more critics would write about him. It was a huge part of our lives um, that had an impact way down the line, yeah, yeah. you know, um, that it took us over a year. Uh, whether it makes a difference or not, I don't think any of us made any money on it. You know, it wasn't about that. Um, but it's sort of like something that gets seared into your brain. Uh, it's, you know, the, the good parts and the bad parts. It was a painful experience at some points. And then again, it's going to last forever. Abel Ferrara, to me, is the best director I ever worked with. He gave me more opportunities than I was even aware were happening at the time. I don't know, I miss Abel. Abel was great. He was the biggest pussycat in the world. Bad Lieutenant is a fantastic piece of work. So in terms of what has happened in American cinema since 92, in terms of uh, dominant Hollywood cinema, and especially in terms of independent cinema, which is now in decline, uh, it is a highlight, and the movie stands better and better. But I gotta say this, though. I mean, you know, I did a lot of pictures with, with Abel. I'm really proud of that picture. And I'm really proud of Abel, you know, for what he did. You gotta raise the money and make the movie. You know, at this point, I can't see myself or even have the energy to now try to get into some advanced distribution and go carry these films around in the back of a trunk, although we might have to do it. I don't know. But... You know, the films are made and the films are out there. The fact that they're making, that they're putting this film out again, right? I mean, just is a testament to the quality of the film. You know, there's a life after the first weekend. You know what I mean? And that's the films we're trying to make. Cut!